Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. She she has a, and I think every, behind every good trader, every good man, I think the the saying is right. There's a there's an even better or great woman. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. And and she is definitely that for me, um, because she she's whether she realizes it or not, she's a trend follower at heart too. Because she does not take any shit. She <laughs> if there's a losing position going on, she cuts it so fast. <laughs> You don't have to learn to trade alone. Welcome to the Trading Lifestyle Podcast, where we interview professional currency traders and industry experts who can help you improve your trading and your life. And now, your host, Hugh Kimura. Hello, traders. This is Hugh Kimura, and welcome to another episode of the Trading Lifestyle Podcast, brought to you by TradingHeroes.com. In this episode, I was really fortunate to be able to sit down and talk with Mike Melisinos. He's a fund manager in New York, and he started his fund at a really young age. So it was really interesting to get his perspective on how he got started, how he figured out his ideal trading system, and just the general components of his life that has contributed to his success so far. We get pretty deep into quite a few topics, and it was really interesting to hear his opinion on things like how to start a fund, the role that health and relationships play in trading, as well as his experiences with the Trading Tribe. If you don't know what that is, that's Ed Sakota's trading group that helps traders become better. And he really details the process of why that worked for him and how it helped him become a better trader. So I really hope you enjoy this interview. Get out your notebook, take out Evernote, and take some notes because there's a ton of value in this podcast. And I really appreciate Mike taking the time out. He spent over an hour with me on Skype. So I hope you guys get a lot out of this. Before we get started, this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only and is not investment, trading, or financial advice of any kind. But in this episode, there might be some advice on how to properly pronounce IKEA. As you know, Forex or any type of trading is very risky and you could lose all of your money. Seriously. And finally, past performance does not indicate future results. All right, now on to the show. Hey, Mike, thanks for coming on the show. Hey, you. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, so... um. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you got started. Uh, well, I came from humble beginnings in um, uh, New Jersey, in the suburbs of New Jersey. And I grew up a sports guy all my life, played sports from five years old through my early 20s, mm-hmm. uh, baseball mostly. And, um, you know, I came to the, the training world after I... After a brief stint in public accounting after college, um, I went to work at Bear Stearns in October 2007. Mm-hmm. So if you're already picturing the calendar in your, in your head, is about six months before I went down. And I was 23 at the time and thought I had it made in the shade. <laughs> Pretty much, I had a friend who got me in. I thought, okay, three, four years, I'll put my work in, I'll be on the desk, I'll be making a million dollars, and, you know, my mid-20s, uh, by the time I'm 30, it'll be over. Yeah. Um, I was not a smart person back then. Um, maybe I've made some uh, strides since then, but, you know, at that time, I was caught up in the, just kind of the lifestyle of it all, and, uh, and just wanting to feel cool and, you know, work, yeah, I work on Wall Street, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's that's cool to some people. And, and to me, you know, it sucked me in. I'm not going to lie to you. It sucked me in. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, was putting my work there for, for a bit. And, and then, obviously, the market started to rumble, I think, to pretty much start the year in uh, 2008. And, and then things started getting weird. Um, and then, obviously, it went down in March. But at the time, I was studying and reading about what I do now, which is trend following trading, which, you know, is a, anyone who knows is a totally different philosophy, pretty much on life and on trading and everything in between. Um, but to me, you know, being a sports guy, I, I was always concerned about winning all the time. I grew up watching Joe Montana, you know, watching, I grew up, you know, the Yankees, you know, they, all they did was win through my, my teenage years. Mm -hmm. So, and I went to really good, uh, sports schools too. So I was just used to it. And dare I say, I was, I was a little, 
you know, maybe stuck up about winning too. I just felt it was just a normal thing that everyone wants to win. Everyone's always looking for the, you know, the best way to do things. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the real world outside of your little bubble and that it just turns out to be not the case. So, you know, trend following sat very well with me because mm -hmm. uh, it, it was it was just built on let's do what statistically or empirically is is proven to be right proven to work mm -hmm. um and uh and let's just focus on you know committing to the discipline every day and 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 focus on winning for you know the longer term not you know Derek Jeter's not trying to get a hit every at bat I mean he is but he understands that he's not going to mm -hmm. and that's okay you know and the coach and the crowd don't get on him for not winning every day or getting a hit every day. Mm -hmm. um, that, you know, it's like no big deal. But it seemed to be on Wall Street and around the time oh, wait, um, that bear was starting to go down, I started to see that that was, why, that was the way that, that that business was run, that you were supposed to win every single day. But, you know, it's just not natural. You know, it's it's that's just not the way it works. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just, I mean, I, you know, I wish it didn't, but uh, this, there's just no way you could do that. Um, and um, so, so I started to learn more about trend following and start to get a little deeper with it. And um, the first couple books that I read about it, one being Covell's book, I slammed it shut a few times and said, "This, this doesn't make any fucking sense." Because if this, if if this was this easy. Everyone would be doing it. Mm -hmm. And bear in mind, I was still a dumb kid at the time, thinking that everybody was always looking for the best way to do things. But no. Then I started to peel it back, peel the onion back, and see that people really just want to do it their own way. They want to do it the way they think works and the way that they, you know, they wish that worked. But mm -hmm. they're not really concerned. They're not really taking a, a, re a real, honest view and uh, honest approach about what actually does work because they did at that time I'm like they, they would they would do this way they would do the trend following way they wouldn't be buying and holding uh, no matter what way and and that seemed to be like very uh, silly to me that that people would be doing this and I said ah, you know this can't be this can't be right you know there's got to be more to it I got to be missing something mm -hmm. um, if, if everyone knew about trend following everyone would be doing it because the way that Covell was writing about it sound it just made it seem like sound is so easy <laughs> but but as I got into it I started to see that you know on a deeper level <sighs> the trading methodology much like a diet doesn't really matter even if it works because the thing that actually makes it work is the guy or the people that are actually executing the thing mm -hmm. you know we all know how to eat well right mm -hmm. so a diet you know i think i think everyone who who's uh, lived a while can obviously write a good diet that you know would get them thin or get them in shape and everything mm -hmm. but we have more we have more information on how to get fit and how to get healthy than we've ever had in the history of the planet. But how many, what percentage of the people are walking around fat, sick, and weak? You know, mm -hmm. a, a lot of people. So, so it's not just the, the system or the, or the mechanic or the, or the, the holy grail approach. That, that's not what you need. I mean, that's one part of it. You need to know what to do. But then you you know you need to actually do the thing. Mm -hmm. That's what actually gets you the gets you the results. And there's still you know there's something to be said for people that actually do the thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that and that um, you know, I started to you know live through the bear collapse and go through the rumblings of uh, you know Wall Street and mm -hmm. the market starting to fall and everything. And I started to see that you know this trend following stuff. I understand now why it's hard mm -hmm. because. Uh, you used to get into battle and, you know, it's – you have to deal with your own feelings and emotions about things that, you, you know, that you may not just want to do. Uh, much like if you're on a strict diet every time you walk past the donut shop and you're like, oh, my God, I want that. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want to get thin, you better not do that. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, I understand the urge, but don't tell me that you could do that every day or every other week and 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 keep and you know reach your goal. Like it's just not going to happen, dude. Mm-hmm. So, so that you know, I started to wait. That was that was one of my bigger ahas. That oh, like it's not it's not that easy because of of all the emotions in, involved in it. Mm-hmm. And um, and then you know, bear went down. It was my big aha that or my first one that. Um, looking around at the people that I thought were very smart and I looked up to, and, and they are very smart, but but they they weren't they weren't looking to win, well like I thought they were. Mm-hmm. They were just looking to do what they've always done and felt comfortable, mm-hmm. which was you know what a lot of people still do is just buy and hold stocks or buy and hold their own company stock because they're loyal or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, you know that can work sometimes, but. Uh, but it better it better work most of the time. Otherwise, you're kind of toast if it doesn't. So, so that to me, um, that opened my eyes. Seeing that, all right, this trend following stuff could uh, actually make sense and actually work. And um, and then and then going into the um, you know to the uh, financial crisis several months later, I I was me and the team I was on where we went over to J P Morgan and. Um, and the financial crisis is my second big one because at that time I'd already, you know, got deeper into trend following, got deeper into experimenting with some, uh, modeling, some systems and just, just trying to get into the math of it and trying to get some hypothetical reps of trading some fake money. Mm -hmm. And at that time I was also following a lot of the real guys who were actually trading, who had funds at the time and, you know, a lot of the veterans in the space, um, so then I can overlay the results of the real guys and the results of my hypothetical system that I was experimenting with mm-hmm. over what was happening on uh, w- over what was happening in the market just to see how it all kind of worked and you know where the money came from and where the performance came from mm-hmm. and and that was my second big one second big aha when uh, Lehman went down and and the uh, stock market melted down in late 08 and 09. And I saw that, okay, look, this trend following stuff is just kind of better. Um, it feels more intuitive to me. It feels more, it's based, it, it's based on survival and being opportunistic rather than we have to push a, we have to push our way on the market or on life all the time. We have to make it fit to us. Mm -hmm. It's like that, that to me doesn't feel very natural. Mm -hmm. Um, so trend following, uh, it, it, it spoke to me not on just a trading level, but I I, I always say it's trend following to me is a more of a life philosophy that could be applied to trading than anything else. It's, Mm -hmm. um, it's something we, you can apply the core principles to anything and, Nay, I say you, you know. Nay, I say I guarantee you, you probably have success doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so dieting, right? Yeah. Uh, you could yeah. start. We start with start with diversifying, right? Mm-hmm. Don't just eat one food, right? Yeah. Eat a bunch of different foods. All different foods give you all different nutrients and vitamins and all this and that. They have all different macro and micronutrients. So you gotta you gotta have a diversified diet, balanced diet. Mm-hmm. You know, you eat. You eat when you're hungry. You don't try to force feed anything. You stop when you're full. Um, and, uh, you know, other than that, I don't really know what else to say. I mean, <laughs> so in terms of trading, yeah. that means like trading different instruments and maybe not concentrating on one market. Yeah, you, you trade all different markets. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you, you're riding. You're riding the meal. You're riding the market. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as you're, as long as it's working for you, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to your goals. So if you're, if you're a 200 pound guy and you want to be 150 pounds, you know, your your stop out point is going to be quicker because you're going to want to eat less, right? Mm-hmm. If you want to gain more, you're going to hold it for longer. Mm-hmm. Um, so you're going to mean you're going to be sticking with sticking with what's working according to your goals um, for as long as it's working. And then when you reach your goal or you reach your your pain point or your full point, uh, you stop, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's that. 
there's not really many other ways to do it, but I think I think the I think the value, the value approach, like the buy and hold and just buy no matter what it is, no matter where the price is, no matter what the market's doing type of approach, mm-hmm. um, seems to be seems to be consistent with a lot how a lot of people eat. They just keep eating, and they only eat one thing. And today it seems to be they only eat grains and uh, processed nonsense junk food mm-hmm. um, with little with with little focus on uh, other things out there that are good for them. Mm-hmm. They focus on one area, and uh, they have a lot of derivatives of the same type of food. You know, That's so true. you know you get chips, yeah. you get you get wafers, you get crisps you know it's all the same thing it's all made from wheat and corn you mm-hmm. know Th- that's it yeah, um totally. I, it doesn't matter what you call it it's the at its core level it's the same stuff so to me that's very similar to how the equities and the bonds were bond world um functions that's you know mid cap smid cap <laughs> you know micro cap you know it's like all this stuff i mean by the end of the day it's all stocks and bonds mm-hmm. so uh, they all perform very similarly over time, but it sells very well. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. And if that's the goal of the system is to sell more stuff, then they do that really well. Mm-hmm. But yeah. if you are acting on your own interests and you want to and you want to, uh, you know, uh, fend for yourself and, and, and do, you know, uh, and execute a system and, and live the life you want, I mean, you, you got to find your own way. And, uh, you know, for me, that was trend following. And to me, it's kind of common sense. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, it might not work for everybody, though. So, what, what are like, no, the, no, what are no, the hard doesn't. parts about trend following and what are the easy parts? I mean, what, what makes trend following, um, difficult, I guess, for a lot of people, even yourself, maybe? Uh, the, the, the discipline of following a, a strict set of rules. Mm hmm. Um, because, uh, one day of the week, it, it may be easy as cake for you. Mm-hmm. It, you may have just, uh, you know, met a new girl, you're in a great mood. Um, you go on a first day, you have a great time and you get your signal to buy, you know, uh, a few markets the next day and you, oh, you're in a great mood. You could do it. No problem. <laughs> but then, and then a few months go by and you break up. She's not the girl for you. Right. Yeah. Fine. No big, no big deal. But then that day you're like, ah, I don't know if I, you know, I don't want to. You know, I want to. Yeah, I, 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 I don't believe this position's right. I don't believe this signal's right. You know, you're in a totally different mental state, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and that, and that's difficult because you know we're human, and you know, there's, we have, we have lives outside of trading, uh, so we have things that affect our moods and stuff. So, you know, following a strict set of rules in the face of all those thing, all those emotions that come up naturally, mm-hmm. uh, is tough. And you, you, you see a lot of, uh, funds and, um, you know, other managers, they complicate things by getting terrible, terrible investors mm-hmm. that, that probably shouldn't be investing with them, but maybe they have deep pockets. Maybe they're, you know, hoping that they will, they can change them mm-hmm. and change their philosophy and point of views on things. But, and that, and that's the thing where I've managed money for a few years to start to see that you start to see that oh you know there's some people I really shouldn't be in business with I should probably turn this guy away mm-hmm. um, so that I mean that has nothing to do with the trading but it does have anything to do with with managing the money and at some level managing the money has everything to do with trading because you're always in business with other, other people mm-hmm. and and whether it be just yourself or with you know, a friend or, you know, advisor or whatever. So it's those those subtle little differences that everyone kind of thinks it's all about indicators and all about, you know, fancy, you know, systems and all this stuff. But these subtle little things like your everyday life uh, and feelings that come up in relationships that, that you have, have a massive effect on your on your trading performance, and, and if you notice, you notice the best players in the game, uh, you know, in sports as well as a lot of other, a lot of other endeavors. The best players rarely have any drama. Mm-hmm. Um, some guys do, but and you see some guys do when they're going through really bad patches of performance, or when they're at the end of their career and they don't want to 
and they don't want to believe that it's over mm-hmm. type stuff. So they you know, start to act out and things. Yeah. Uh, like A-Rod, A-Rod's a great example, you know. Prior to coming to the Yankees, he had virtually little drama. He crushed everybody, you know. Tons of home runs, tons of RBIs, MVPs left and right. He comes to the Yankees. He's not really the hot hot dog anymore. Derek Jeter runs the show. He doesn't like that. He lets it affect his performance, and then a lot of off the field drama comes up. He gets divorced. He gets he gets banned for steroids. He gets implicated in many other things. He lies on camera, uh, you know, in an interview on uh, national television. You know, mm-hmm. so. Trend following to me is just is following a system that works for you, but mm-hmm. it also works in nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it doesn't work in the markets, um, or it doesn't work in nature, it probably doesn't work in the markets, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that, that that is the most difficult to me is is to keep you know keep a perspective. Say, hey, you know, I'm not in a good mood today, but the right thing to do is to take the signal and to obey what the system says, mm-hmm. whether or not whether or not you know, however I feel about it. You know, my feelings don't really matter. They're there to, you know, as Ed 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 uh, Sakota would say, you know, the 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 feelings you're unwilling to feel are your are your real system. So, if if you're unwilling to deal with them and and see them as a positive and and learn from how you're feeling, uh, especially when trade signals come up, then they're gonna impede your performance. Mm-hmm. They're, they're going to stand in the way of you executing the thing flawlessly. And um, as he also said, there's really nothing wrong with systems. There's nothing wrong with different strategies. But and, – and, and I say much like there's nothing wrong with value investing. Like mm-hmm. I'm not like a trend following guy who's like, oh, my God, value investing sucks. The only way <laughs> to do it right is through trend following futures. Like no, 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 no. There's many other guys that do it well. But what they do well is stick to their plan well. And – I feel that a lot of people think or a lot of people are not really doing their own thinking about what really works for them Mm -hmm. and and what works, um, you know, what they can do day in and day out. No problem that what they can execute. No problem. They're always looking for the new thing, the new diet, the new manager, the new hedge fund to bail them out. Mm-hmm. Because you know, they're, but they're really bailing out their feelings. Mm-hmm. It's it's not, It's like if you want to get deep about it, that that's really what it is. So that's why you see a lot of performance chasing. You see a lot of ninety day fad diets come mm-hmm. and go, mm-hmm. and it's just there's a never ending stream of them because people are always on the lookout for, you know, oh my god, I had such a losing streak. I need something new. I need something to get back on track. I, I got to make all this back really fast. You're like yeah. that. Like come on. Come on, I, I, I think we are a little more evolved as a species, so we could understand that that's happening and not make that mistake anymore. Yeah. But, but you see, people can't help themselves, and uh, and they keep doing the same things over and over. Um, so, um, so the, I mean, I, the feelings, the feelings thing is is the um, the hardest part about trend following for me. It's not the uh, and I called a lot of guys before I started my fund um, because I was a nervous, you know, 26 year old, and uh, I thought it was all about the math and all about the coding ability and all that mm-hmm. stuff too. Yeah. And one of the best traders I, you know, on record who we just spoke about before this, um, David Drews. Um, for the listeners who don't know, he's done about 17% since 1981. Yeah, like it's all on that his website. Is, it's amazing. Yeah, that that is nuts. Yeah. Um, and do you know anything about him? No. Well, let's get into Ed Sakota a little bit. I, I'm really interested yeah. in that part. I mean, I, from what we were talking about before, he really helped mm-hmm. you turn your trading around. So can you give us a little bit of um, what the process was and how that helped? Uh, well, yeah. Uh, and I was a, I was a member of the New York City Trading Tribe, um, mm-hmm. and anyone who has any experience with that there's a lot of tribes over the country it's not just one um you can go learn from ed at his house or something like that but i I didn't do that approach um but what really you know just going off of what i was saying before about the feelings is that i had my first biggest mistake is not knowing what i wanted okay i didn't i didn't know what i was i didn't even know what my goal was I was kind of in the, 
yeah, but I just want to like do my own thing. I want to get out of Wall Street. I want to, you know, I, I know what I don't want. Mm-hmm. And, um, and one of the guys in the tribe who actually invests with me now, it's, it's, he says, that's like saying, I don't want to go to Seattle. Like, well, well, yeah, well, we're, but that means you could go a million other places. Where, mm-hmm. where do you want to go? Mm-hmm. Um, so getting clear and I think being honest um, about what I actually wanted. Um, and one of the things in tribe we do is uh, we have snapshots and we draw pictures and um, trying to try to put a picture to a very high uh emotion like put 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 some real emotion to the picture not just draw a bunch of stick figures you know Mm -hmm. you gotta like you gotta feel it and if you can feel it you can do it type thing Mm -hmm. um and so so the pictures you know the snapshot helped and also the um what we do is um call like a bumper sticker process where it's just it's kind of like your your mission if Mm -hmm. you will or or your values and your you, uh, you know what, what what you what you want to be mm-hmm. and and mine was lead by example so for me i knew i wanted to if i couldn't play baseball anymore because i broke my leg in a bad accident and i just couldn't play anymore my career was pretty much over mm-hmm. um i knew i wanted to compete somehow and and the snapshot process and the bumper sticker and just the members of the tribe helping me clarify what it is I wanted um, really helped me to put it into action. So eventually we came to the conclusion I wanted to still compete somehow. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted to adhere and live according to a code or a discipline, which for me became trend following. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew I wanted to be healthy. I knew I wanted to provide for my own family. And I knew uh, coming from Bear and JP during the worst market conditions um you know the past whatever x years that i wanted to be able to provide and uh be able to execute under pressure uh in in crucial moments uh for my friends family and colleagues so i feel because i felt around that time that a lot of people who invested with other advisors or whatever the advisors themselves seem to go against their discipline too. Uh, and the people behind the curtain who I thought were smart lost too. Mm -hmm. So they were doing something wrong. So, so, you know, I really wanted to be that guy who was doing it right and who actually did the thing who put his own money on the line. And, you know, uh, between me and my fiance, we have about 15% of my own funds. So, uh, you know, I have most of my net worth in my fund. I wouldn't, I, to me, I wouldn't invest in anyone else who, who didn't have that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I knew I wanted to be the guy on the line. I didn't want to be sitting back and commenting and writing a newsletter and <laughs> saying, this is what you should do. Yeah. You know, just like just like if you went to the gym and you're going to get, you know, uh, work, uh, getting a, a trainer workout and the guy was 300 pounds. Like, no, I, would, yeah. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't train with you because you're not doing the thing. Come on. So, you know, I wanted to do the do and um and that and that to me was um you know the only way to do that was to start my own fund it was it was to put my own money behind it and to mm-hmm. put the people that you know i saw lose money and in some cases a lot of money during that that period that i was in the belly of uh at such a young age that I, you know I, I i wanted to provide for them uh i wanted to be the guy that actually made money for them or protected them when the shit hit the fan. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that, uh, you know, that, that's just, yeah. And I think that comes from just being a sports guy my whole life. You know, Mm -hmm. the beautiful thing about me, uh, about sports to me is that you could see them actually play, you know, Mm -hmm. you and there's no lying about the stats. Yeah. Yeah. You can't like fake a career. You can't. Um, it's like one of the few industries where you just can't fake it mm-hmm. and, and everyone gets to see every rep if they want to, if they mm-hmm. want to watch you play. They can watch every single down you play or every single at bat or whatever. And, and that, um, and that I, I liked a lot too. So, you know, so in my own, you know, I knew, and that was another thing too. I wanted to be transparent. I wanted people to know what I'm doing 
Mm-hmm. I wanted people to know how it works and why it works. You know, I wanted to provide the proof that what I'm doing is not just based on belief. Um, that was the system I was trying to get away from. Mm-hmm. I was trying to get away from this whole vine hold belief. Well, yeah, they always go up kind of, right? Well, mm-hmm. yeah, but even if they do, it's still not the best way to do it. But, ah, you know, yeah. it's just after a while, you just can't like, you can't talk to those people anymore. Just can't like waste your time. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, you know, I, I, I like to, I like to, um, you know, e- e- even to this day, and even with every new prospective investor, you know, I want it to be transparent. I, lo- I love being transparent. I found how my life really changed uh, after I met my now fiance, where I was just kind of a punk baseball kid. And if <laughs> anyone knows any baseball players, you know, coming up through the 90s, and now, now it's all about lacrosse players. They're like kind of the cool kids now. But back then, <laughs> back then it was baseball, and we thought we were the shit all the time yeah uh so so that was me kind of mm-hmm. and uh and then i met you know my now fiance and i you just learned about the learned about how to be uh you know polite and uh <laughs> nice and honest mm-hmm. um and straightforward about things and i you know my my personal life and the, and the business life kind of converged mm-hmm. and um and now i think you know that's helped me make money. Um, so she, and it really has she, helped me, has she helped you become a better trader? Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. She she has a, and I think every, behind every good trader, every good man, I think the the saying is right. There's a there's an even better or great woman. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. And and she is definitely that for me, um, because she she's whether she realizes it or not, she's a trend follower at heart too, because she does not take any shit. She, if there's a losing position going on, she cuts it so fast. <laughs> so that's, you know, that, that, that helps too. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. so, uh, I think, uh, you know, a- outside of the, the trading models. And I think that's where I'm going to get, you know, if, if people email me or call me after this interview and I, I've gotten a lot of calls and other interviews, mm-hmm. yeah, they all want to know about the trading model. It's like, dude, mm-hmm. it, it's not that important. Like I'll give you mine, and you're not that you're not gonna perform anywhere near what I'll perform, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you know, and you'll have your own reason why you won't. So, yeah. so I mean, okay, so like you know, recapping, you know, Ed's code to help me uh, really get clear, and, and 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 more just about the process that he has, the um the trading tribe process, mm-hmm. and if anyone goes, go, wants to go look that up, go look that up on Ed Ed's website, um, and um, and that really helped me just clarify what I wanted, what I want, what I saw my life being. Mm-hmm. And, and then also understanding what kind of, uh, risk, uh, and returns I was looking to, looking to achieve and mm-hmm. what kind of risk and volatility I'm comfortable with, you know, now we're getting to like the trading uh, terms of things. Yeah. Uh, um, so I can actually, you know, so my emotions wouldn't be gyrating so much that, that I could actually follow through my discipline. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, and I think when you know before you start, you're at a massive advantage mm-hmm. because you're not going to be swayed by the latest fund strategy that's making a ton of money. And you're sitting there, you know, taking your whipsaws and you're not really making much. You're like, oh, my God, I just want to make money now. Like, well, yeah, but you know, you'll have your turn. Don't worry about it. This yeah. is what you signed up for. Mm-hmm. Um, if you do this, if you execute your way. Over a long period of time, you're gonna you're, you're gonna win out. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. you may not be the best guy ever to trade or anything, but um, you're gonna win. And uh, and the added benefit though is that you're gonna win, but you're gonna keep your stress level down. Mm-hmm. And that to me, that to me is is a massive win. You know, making money is great, but if making money is at the cost of my health, like no way am I doing it. Mm-hmm. No, no way. Mm-hmm. So um, so that yeah. I mean. Yeah. I really like the fact that you uh, posted your track record on your website, and you you posted your system also. And uh, yeah, yeah, not too many um, people do that. Yeah, I think I think I um, you know I'll probably make some you know uh, maybe changes to the content on there, just n- n- not to take any information away, just to make it actually make it more clear mm-hmm. um, and less maybe jargony. I think it's a little jargony on there right now, mm-hmm. but um, but I, whatever. I'm young. I'm learning. Come on. 
so uh, yeah, and I, th- I think that really goes a long way when you know I speak with prospective and, and current investors too. Um, they really like the 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 transparency of how it works and how it behaves, and I think I think that's a thing. Uh, I'm writing I'm writing a book right now about about the um, I think the flaws of the investment management model world where the investor kind of just trusts the manager. The manager doesn't want to be bothered with your your feelings about performance mm-hmm. and winning and losing streaks. You know, mm-hmm. so there's really not much talking going on. There's not much understanding, and especially during crunch time, there's not much trust. Mm-hmm. And that's when you need trust the most mm-hmm. is, is during those crunch times. Um, and, uh, and and that's why I think you get people chasing and coming and going in droves. And um, that's why you see the average investor returns is much, much lower than the S&P or any hedge fund index or any other asset class for that matter. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's near the bottom because they can't help themselves. But I think the managers are... You know, they they like to blame. They like to say, hey, yeah, but that's their, you know, investors are stupid. See, like, (laughs) they don't listen to us. Well, yeah, but I think that's your, I I believe, and I I believe it's your responsibility to, to, to communicate in a way that actually, you know, tells them what to expect and stuff. So, Mm -hmm. so they don't freak out as much. I mean, you can't help everybody. Everyone's going to have their own, you know emotions about things but you can at least calm down or at least uh, educate them better by being honest and being being proficient in, in your craft and I think that to me is where Ed has a massive massive advantage uh, I probably during his career is that a- a- anyone who reads this stuff or anyone who talks to him understands that he's a lot smarter than you but <laughs> but He's probably a lot nicer, a lot more honest, and a lot more caring of a human being and helpful uh, than you are too. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think it's easy just to go after his, you know, math intellect and say, "Oh yeah, but what's your system, Ed? You know, if I if I just had yours, I can make a ton." Mm -hmm. You know, that's why he doesn't even bother giving advice because he knows that's fucking nonsense. It's (laughs) it's not 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 true. You're not going to do it, so he doesn't waste his time. but um, you know, I, I I think more than more than the trading uh, specific uh, principles that Ed and a lot of other trend following uh, successful trend following guys or any other investors in general could teach you, um, it, it's really about the kind of people they are and how they run their lives overall. Mm-hmm. Um, because to me, they they go hand in hand. They're they're how they're training is probably how they're living their lives. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. that that's that's probably it. Um, Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah I mean, so I, a lot of people listening to this probably want to start a fund like you did, especially since you were so young. Could you give yeah. us any like ideas on what that process was like? You know, some of the hardships, some of the easy things. Um. Well, yeah, I think, um, well, the first year, with the first year I did, um, uh, I started out in just in managed accounts, so I didn't start a fund until my second year. Okay. Um, m- mostly because I just wanted to get as much track record under my belt as I could before I started taking on more costs. And, and technically, yeah, there are more costs with a fund, mm-hmm. but the process for starting a fund and just an investment management firm in general is not that difficult. Um, you know, to me, I just registered with the NFA and. You know, that's a that's a thousand dollars a year mm-hmm. uh, to maintain your registration. Um, I think the Series Three exam, which I didn't have at the time, was like one hundred and fifty dollars. Like yippee, that's nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then to start like an LLC or an LP with the state, and um, you know, it's like another hundred dollars here and there. It's it's like nothing. Mm-hmm. I think the probably the biggest pain. Or is just to keep up with if you have investors from like different states and things that you'd have to just make sure you register with each state just so you're in compliance with the laws and stuff. Mm-hmm. But um, but I mean the no I think I think I think most of the like I think that's the easiest part of the whole process. Mm-hmm. You know because those are just check marks. You just do them and you know you have to do them to be legal. So 
you don't really have much emotion there to like stop you from doing it because you know, yeah, I don't want to go to jail, so I'll do it. Or I, I don't want to get fined, so I'll, I got to do it. Yeah. Um, so you just do it. But I think the harder part is um, knowing what type of strategy you want to you want to implement and mm-hmm. what and what type of person you want to invest with you. I think. Yeah, it's common in the in the fun wor- fund management world where oh my god, yeah, there's like forty one trillion dollars in capital over the globe. You know, I I, I want to manage as much of it as I can. Mm-hmm. Well, nah, I don't. To me, I don't. You know, mm-hmm. not even close. But I think I think getting your avatar, if you will, create the perfect person that would invest with you. And and mm-hmm. for me, it was easy for me. Uh, when I started, because that person was me, uh, okay. I knew I wanted to I wanted to uh, manage money for twenty, thirty something year olds and and you know young people looking to find different ways to invest other than copying what their parents did, and and uh, you know we're okay with uh, thinking a little differently and um, and going at it uh, you know. A, Investing with a person who uh, who they knew, you know, me in that case, you know, didn't just give their money to a fidelity or you know some no, you know, some big name where they were just you know they were just a uh, you know a drop in the hat. They weren't really going to given be given the attention because, like as I said before, the the transparency and the communication about who's doing the trading mm-hmm. and and uh, and what to expect, you know, in terms of results, uh, I think matters a whole lot more than, um, you know, trying to copy, you know, and try to try to mimic what Warren Buffett does. And if I just do that, I'll be fine. Like, no, you're not. You're not. You're not. Yeah. Because yeah. You, you don't have the discipline he has, and, and you don't have the, you you don't have anything what he has. So. Um, and, and that's where I think I think a lot of people go wrong. They just try to copy, and they try to they try to do what other people do because they see them being successful at it. Mm-hmm. So well, that that may not be the best fit for you. And I think I think you know their method. Let them do their method, fine. But do your method. Mm-hmm. Make sure it has some merit. You know, test the thing and all that stuff. But mm-hmm. um, but then you know once you get comfortable uh, with this being the way that you want to do it, um, you know, then you just do it. Um, I, I think I think a lot of people just don't they don't start that way. They just want to they just look at who's winning and they try to copy them, and then which is which is stupid because there's always a new person winning all the time, <laughs> and you're just always chasing around. You, you, you don't get anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I guess well, I don't know what else to have to say about. It. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. I mean, a lot of people wouldn't think about targeting that younger age group because they would say, "Oh, maybe they don't have a lot of money, or you know, maybe they're not so, as sophisticated." But um, I guess it's worked out pretty well for you, right? Uh, yeah, man. Um, you know, and and a beautiful thing about it is that look, uh, I mean, I have a goal of 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 the assets I'd like to manage, just so I could, you know, live the way I'd like to live. Mm-hmm. Uh, but beyond that, it seems wasteful, um, and which may seem weird to some people. Uh, but, but to me, the scoreboard is not the dollars in my account. Mm-hmm. It's the dollars I put into other people's accounts. Hmm. So okay. if I get the right people, they're going to stay with me. Mm-hmm. If I don't, they're going to come at the wrong time. They're going to exit at the wrong time. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to matter how much money they give me because I'm not going to make them anything. Mm-hmm. So... So a good example, uh, me being a, you know still a stupid kid when I first started, I I started in 2011. For anyone who knows trend following, 2008, 2009, 2010 were pretty good years. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was really pumped. I'm like, oh, this is gonna be great. I'm just gonna be able to you know latch on to this and start at a great time, right? And mm-hmm. eh, wrong. Entered the worst stretch or one of the worst stretches. Of trend following in history, um, as far as you know, drawdowns and and and, uh, and things go. But but the people that I've you know I've grown my lists, I've grown my asset base since then, mm-hmm. uh, and I've only had one person uh, leave, 
and and that wow. person who and that person who left, I made money for. He had to like, you know, he's a he was another businessman, so he had to like, take his money to go buy another business. So I was like, okay, fine. I mean, what are you gonna do? But but that to me, uh, you know, working with the right people, you one, you know who's on your team. You know, this is like old school sports where it's not just free agency. People coming and going all the time where the team changes over all the time. This is like a crew that you get to work with and you get to understand and communicate with. And everyone knows, you know, their role. Uh, mm -hmm. And so so we can all calm down and just execute our, our role uh, well. And that has no choice but to translate into into profits, mm -hmm. into good performance. And even when you lose, it's no, it's no big deal, you know. Yeah. Like we use, you know, and 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 me over maybe other some other guys, we use the losses to our advantage, you know. We use the drawdown periods to actually invest more and uh, not just blindly. You know, people are like forgetting, yeah, but will it go down more? Like, no. Okay, well here we'll go over it again. You know, this is how it works. Blah mm -hmm. blah blah. Mm -hmm. So you know, maybe they choose to reinvest more or not, but. At least now they know we use those we use those instances to to teach more because uh, mm -hmm. you know people forget people forget about things. Um, but I think you know a after what I was saying before about the uh, when I started in 2011 we saw a lot of money come into CTAs and trend followers tons of money mm -hmm. right because they all wanted to they all wanted to get on back of the you know the same thing I was doing right they wanted to latch on the post 08 move, the 08 move, mm -hmm. uh, because trend was getting a ton of money and, and equities and buy and hold stuff got crushed. So they're like, oh yeah, we need the CTA stuff now. So some acted quick, some didn't, or most didn't, like me, I didn't, you know. Mm -hmm. The best time to get in was probably, you know, right after, you know, 08 or, you know, right before 08. Um, but now you see now now what happened right you get you get three years 2011 12 13 pretty bad years on average for the for the whole group uh this year actually making money but those three years you saw a ton of money leave again mm -hmm. you know that's like to me that's silly because that's that was that's the best time to invest in these in these things now if if the managers and the investors did their job in actually talking about that Mm -hmm. And actually saying, look, I don't think you should invest right now. Um, maybe you should wait. Don't chase me. You're chasing me. Let's l let me lose a little bit. Um, you know, don't get on. Don't just chase this hot hand that you know because it's gonna, we're going to get back. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we can you know so we can uh, you know invest in, in a stronger point later on. Mm -hmm. But that's just not how the investing uh, investment world works, you know. Yeah, yeah. The managers just want to take the money. They just want to get new investors. They want to make more money. The investors want to make more money. So everyone wants to make more money, but people lose more money in the process. Like, and these are all like smart people. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like they have to see this, don't they? Like, I, <laughs> I still don't get it on a lot of levels. Like, I just. This is not that difficult, and like you guys are making the same mistake again, and and now they're the same mistake again. You see, trend following is dead. Articles left and right, mm -hmm. and and what's happening this year? Making a ton of money. <laughs> <laughs> where where assets have flown out the door in the past three years, and now they're making money. And what's going to happen? We're going to have another good year or two, and they're going to come right back. Mm -hmm. And um, so I mean, I, I I try to I try to n not not. I want to say avoid those, avoid those uh, uh, people rushing in and rushing out. But I, I do what I can do, and that to me is be honest about how my system performs. Mm -hmm. And and I know more or less when when a good time to invest and when a good time to stay out is. Mm -hmm. And uh, just one example. So my first year, uh, 2011, at the end of August, when gold and a couple other markets were spiking up like crazy. Uh, my, uh, my, I was up about twenty four percent. I was like eight months in. I was like, "This is wow. great." Yeah. You know, see, this is great. Yeah, but it's not normal, you know. Mm -hmm. Based on the risk I take, you know, I'm not super, super aggressive. So, you know, twenty four in six months is like that's really good, but it's probably not going to be another twenty four over the next six. You know, no, not even close. Mm -hmm. So I have one referral. Um, 
uh, from one of my investors at the time, and he he referred um, uh, Fund of Funds because uh, he had a lot of connections, and he referred a Fund of Funds friend of his, and uh, who who ran a Fund of Funds in Connecticut. And he called me. And he's like, oh, you know, we're looking to get started with you. I said, yeah, no, nah, you're not coming in right now. And my <laughs> and my dad, my dad was fucking beside himself. He said, are you out of your mind? Take the money. What are you doing? You're managing like. Three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> you take this investment, and you know, it just shows how naive and stupid I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm like, yeah, but it's just not the right thing to do. It's just, it's just not right. They're gonna lose money. Mm-hmm. They're gonna lose. Like I wouldn't invest right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so they listened to me, and uh, they came in over a year later. Uh, well, actually, they came in next July, mm-hmm. the following July. So you know. We were up 24 at that time. We finished the year up nine, wow. and then and then we were down uh, maybe a few percent uh, over the first half of the next year. Mm-hmm. So you see, they could they would have been sitting there for a year and have lost money. Mm-hmm. So you know they got in at a better time. I called them back. I said, "Look, it's dead. Uh, we're getting a lot of whipsaws back and forth. This is not a good period for us, but it's a good period probably to dip your toe in and invest now." Mm-hmm. And uh, and they did, and uh, you know they doubled up their investments since then, and and now they're they're in the green, you know, and nice. and that's and that's the, the, the uh, probably the best example of how I like to operate with people. Mm-hmm. So I'm not always going to take your money. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, like you said, most you people know, just take it and you know not not really just, care about they're it. They're just take it and run. Yeah. Take it and run. Yeah. And, you know, it's just. But I mean, and that's and that was one great thing, you know. On another deep level, learned from Ed too is that uh, it, there's there's just the right way to do things, and you know, I think you you live by your values, you live by your 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 core values that you don't break for anybody. Yeah, you have your trading rules, but you have your life rules that you especially don't break, uh, especially when you're tempted by making more money and blah, 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 you know, like mm-hmm. that's all well and good. But, you know, you see a lot of guys in the space right now that are, that are struggling to hold their assets. And I, and I really just think it's, uh, uh, from not having the right clients in. Mm-hmm. they don't, they don't deal, they don't work with the right people. And I think if you don't know what you want, if you're trying to get everybody, then you're going to get nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you do get people, you, it's going to be at a, at a great expense to your your stress and your health and maybe your relationships and stuff. That I'm not willing to make that trade. Mm-hmm. I don't, you know, we just don't live long enough. I, I I'm not willing to spend my life uh, in a whatever it takes pursuit just to make money. Mm-hmm. That's like to me, it's like you're going down a bad road. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's awesome. More One question that came to mind: uh, Do you mm-hmm. guys do a lot of like back testing on other systems, or do you just run this one system the whole time? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, my uh, the trend following system that I ran, you know, I started I started day one with three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So, so you have some inherent limitations um, that you can't that, that that you can't do with you know fifty million dollars. You know, mm-hmm. so day one. I started trading 11 markets, uh, a simple uh, support and resistance breakout model, mm-hmm. um, and uh, you know I was risking you know like percent and a half, two two percent per trade at that time, mm-hmm. and and um, you know my average holding period is probably a few, that long is probably a few months uh, because I didn't have enough money to give these things enough room. Uh, you know, to to gyrate. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I've grown, I yeah, I've back tested and, and implemented new, um, you know, longer term. It's a longer term model. Uh, the portfolio has grown to thirty six markets now. Wow. Um, and that'll keep growing as my assets grow mm-hmm. uh, because I, I I love diversification. I love just you know I I don't want to miss out on anything that could trend. Um, and I'd hate to see it. Hate to see markets trend without me, uh, especially mm-hmm. me being a trend following trader. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're you design your thing to follow big moves, to get big moves, and and if you don't, that's you know you're not doing your job right. Mm-hmm. So 
yeah, that, that, and that was one motivating thing for my first year that um, you know, I ran into a couple, a couple situations where I saw silver was went up to 50, you know, pretty much bubbled, mm-hmm. um, you know, a couple months before gold did. And the only metal I traded at that time was gold. So I was like, Jesus Christ, here I am. Gold's not gold's going up, but it's going up nowhere near the capacity that silver's going up. And here I am missing this move, and I'm an idiot trend guy who should be in this. <laughs> um, but you know, because it was just the model that I that I tested, and you know, uh, that I that was sticking with, mm-hmm. that you know, I didn't want to go chase it. And um, that's when I started to say, like, oh, okay, you know, I need to I need to build a better you know a better model for you know the long haul. And, uh, yeah, just experimented and, um, you know, got my, you know, model now to where, you know, I have two separate models, you know, they're both, um, um, they're both breakout in nature. One's a very long term one and one's like, I guess a medium term one. The medium term one has average holding period of, you know, six, seven months. Mm -hmm. And the other one, the longer term one has average holding period of 11, 12 months. So... So I mean I don't I don't trade very much uh, because I'm very long term um, on the spectrum of uh, what people like to define them. Everyone you you, you talk to every trend follower they're long term. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's your average holding period? Uh, three months. It's like yeah, that ain't long term, bro. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's like on average that's like a lot of my losers are three months long. And for the people that don't know, you know, your losers a lot shorter in duration than your than your winners are. So, um, so I mean, I'm very long term, and I, 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 you know, I, I probably, I mean, I have some, I guess, ideas on what to do in the future too, and how to add more markets and things. But, but yeah, I think back testing really helps, um, especially if you're new in, in learning this stuff. Mm-hmm. You learn and you learn how how your daily performance works. You learn how to you know, see the signals and then going to the broker and actually executing it. And, um, and, uh, and it helps you clarify on what you're comfortable with, mm-hmm. you know, um, it's not just about, you know, trying to make the most money with the least amount of drawdown. Cause if you're trying to do that, you're like everyone else. And when you're with everyone else, you ain't on the right side. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you see everyone doing it, you better get out, <laughs> you know, no matter what it is. Um, and, uh, and that, you know, I think, I, I think it's, I think it's tough to, um, you know, to honestly test the system and honestly be okay with the results it spits out at you mm-hmm. because you're tempted to just curve it the thing and make it tell you what you want it to tell you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, no matter what, a bowl of ice cream is never going to be healthy for you. <laughs> I'm sorry. It doesn't matter if you replace the sugar with fake crap. <laughs> it, I don't care if you're using raw milk. No, 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 no. It's not healthy. Like, so don't try to make it healthy. Um, similar idea with systems. If it sucks, it sucks. Mm-hmm. Don't try to screw it up and try to mask the thing. Which is what a lot of people do, and by mm-hmm. a lot I mean like ninety nine percent. So, um, so yeah, I mean the you know, and, and just to, just to clarify the the first the first time I I back tested my system, and um, you know, I did a lot of tests, so it wasn't just like one day and I was done. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a you know, in many. Yeah, it was a it was a few year long process of of you know starting to finish uh, it all, but I did it all by hand. Wow. So so by hand, you know by hand I did an Excel. So I didn't write everything down. Mm-hmm. I did an Excel. So, but with Excel is that you could you could actually see under the hood, and you see how it works better. It's not just a, a program where you just pump in some rules and you pump in some data and it spits out some returns and you don't really know how it happens. Mm-hmm. I think going through it by hand. Um, really helped me learn more about it quicker and uh, and judge my own feelings against it, um, you know, naturally as they came up. Um, you know, and I did a lot of hypothetical, you know, just just uh, um, paper trading uh, for a while. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, now, now I don't need to do it by hand. Now now I, I understand, I'm, you know, I'm in. 
you know, I, I get it and I'm, I'm comfortable. So now I have a more, you know, uh, new age, uh, testing system that just pumps, <laughs> pumps it quick and it's more efficient. But, uh-huh. but, but I think, I think the by hand thing really helps. And, and that was one thing that a lot of the older guys talked about too, is that back in the day, they didn't have the computers we had today. Mm-hmm. So they literally had to do it by hand. And, um, and I think that really helped them get more time and reps with, seeing the charts and seeing when the buy signals and the sell signals came and they started to click with reps they started to see ah like this is okay you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so now like i'm not afraid of buying highs i'm not afraid of buying lows i can actually do the thing very very easily because i get it and uh so anyone listening i would say if you're if you're, if you're looking to test anything I, i'd say go hand go by hand uh for a while um until you get really, really confident and really, really um, uh, good at what you're doing, and mm-hmm. then and then you can make it easy. You don't have to like sit there all day, you know, <laughs> you're wasting yeah. your time. But that's, that's but good I think, advice, definitely. Yeah. Um, so I guess we're coming up on about an hour, and I would want to be respectful of your time. But uh, maybe sure. you could get into a little bit about what you do outside of trading that helps you trade better and just enjoy life more. Uh, a big um, me, me and my fiance, we travel a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, we like to just go new places and get on the ground and um, hang out with the people there and um, you know I think uh, I think that helps especially you know I have more of a um, have more of a appreciation for that now that I'm you know managing money for other human beings it's not just me mm-hmm. not just a baseball player that just has to worry about myself all the time you know you get to appreciate uh, you know Spending some time, having some laughs with people, you know, telling jokes and, you know, just having a good time. Um, but, yeah, and outside of that, uh, anyone who knows me uh, knows I'm a complete psycho about my health. So, um, and that is not a joke. <laughs> um, my family could tell you that I'm, I'm the biggest pain in the ass when it comes to holidays because... And now we're coming up on, you know, in a month or so, we're coming up on uh, Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom and whatever, my aunt are going to make some food and I'm going to say what's in it. And if it's, if there's bad stuff in it, I'm not eating it. And uh, so I'm I'm pretty strict, uh, not just with my trading, I'm strict, very strict with my diet, very strict with um, my just training in in general. I always like to be, you know, strong and, you know, I, I can work on my flexibility. Uh, I'm not as flexible as I once used to be. And I've, you know, I have a feeling about stretching that I don't like to deal with. So that explains my tightness, but, um, you know, it just takes too long. It's like, I can't, I can't, I can't devote a half hour to stretching. It's like such a pain. Yes. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but outside of just, you know, just training and diet and, you know, being very clean, um, in, in what I eat and, and, and the, you know, what I put into my body and, uh, and who I hang around with, um, is something that I've, I've always kind of been, uh, strict about, but more so as I've gotten older, mm-hmm. um, you just don't want to give time to people that are just so negative and, you know, you know, give you their, their poor me stories all the time mm-hmm. and all this. And like, I, I, dude, I got, I have no time for that. Um, you know, I, I was lucky enough to meet to meet my fiance who um you know who's really you know changed my life in in a lot of ways where you just learn how to be a good human being and that's um that's something that I you know I take with me even like buying groceries to the store mm-hmm. you just have a pleasurable exchange with the cashier uh you're not above anybody you know like she's not a cashier you're not like a hotshot fund manager like you're, you're a human being, you know, so, you know, you need, you need, you know, I would say like, you should be nice, right? I mean, <laughs> should be nice yeah. because one day you're on top of the world and she's not. And then one day she is and you're not, then, you know, it all cycles through. So, you know, be humble. I like to be humble. I like to, I like to read a lot too. I like mm-hmm. to read, um, you know, I think, um, I have a good app called Oyster that I just, you know, a lot of free books on there. I paid like a, you know, a yearly subscription. It's like 120 bucks or something like that. Uh-huh. And a lot of good books on there. But, um, yeah, I, I don't like to read a lot of market books. I like to read more about, um, you know, 
I guess, philosophy and health. And, and uh, I really like the new, the new people, uh, the people in the startup culture right now that I think are very, very idealistic and um, they're doing things that they, that they think matters to them and they seem to have good morals for now. Um, and, uh, you know, those are the people I like to work with. I like, I like to get those, I like to have those people as investors because I think they, they we have very similar ideals and, and, um, and philosophies about things. And, uh, you know, I, I, last night I was at a meetup in New York city and, you know, just meet good people outside of your industry. Mm -hmm. Um, it's always cool. Uh, cause you just never know. I mean, you never know. And then, you know, you, you, you learn, you learn from everybody. And, uh, and I think, I think the best learners and the best performers are always, they're true to their method, but they're always open to new things that, oh yeah, I never thought of it that way. Let's, you know, let's, let's try that out and mm -hmm. implement that maybe, and you know, see if that works. And if it doesn't, it doesn't, no big deal, but at least you're open to things. And I, I like to be open and, um, you know, being and living in New York city, I love, you know, obviously eating out and, uh, uh, it's harder to eat healthy here, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. but during my cheat days, uh, you know, we, we like to go out and, you know, do a nice little meal, but, mm. uh, um, and for anyone who wants to go to Santa Monica or, or Southern Cal, you know, healthy eating out there is, is, there's no shortages of places to eat healthy out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what I love about Southern Cal the most is that, you know, we, we went there a couple of months ago and it was, whew. You just eat out every meal, and you don't feel like you just gained ten pounds. Uh, you know, you feel great, but yeah, uh, yeah. and the food's really good. Like, it, I think it rivals New York City. Uh, that's how good I think it is. Hmm. But, um, but yeah, I mean, traveling, reading, and um, just talking to the people about their business and stuff, and how they how they came to it, and you know what they're doing, and you know, and just learning from other people and and their. Uh, and their takes on things. Um, I don't like to get involved with like the Twitter nonsense too much because it's, you know, I talk to some people on there, but I mean, it's a lot of like day trading people that, that just want to argue and they just want to like, <laughs> you know, they just want to argue about the Fed and argue about the high frequency trading. It's a lot, a lot I don't know. It seems to be a lot of negativity on, on, in the financial, uh, in the financial guys on Twitter. Um, yeah, so some guys are good, but uh, a lot of just a lot of trolling, a lot of a lot of nonsense yeah, that I just yeah, you know, definitely. Who who has time for that? Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, I I, I I highly encourage meetups. I mean, they're 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 you know it's like going to like a school dance but not knowing anyone there. Like mm -hmm. it feels it feels a little strange at first, but you go to a couple and meet some people and then you're like ah, that's not so bad. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, and they usually have free food and you know drink if you want to drink or something. So, uh, you know, they're all they're all pretty fun. Um, and I think it's cool to see, you know, um, you know, I went to this meetup last night. Who were, you know, I'm sure a lot of guys know about like Covester and Wealthfront, these robot advisors. Mm -hmm. And uh, and another robot advisor, this one was called Hedgeable. Uh, you know, presented their their company last night. And he, I met that guy. And it's like great, you know. Mm -hmm. it's like I never would have met a guy like that in the same space and never never would have known him if if I didn't hear about it somewhere or didn't look him up or something like that which would never happen mm -hmm. you know so you never know where, where you may get another opportunity you know find your next big opportunity or find someone you like or whatever um, I think it's it, it's a testament I think to our generation that we've uh, come up in the technology and the internet era but we but we haven't lost the getting together in person thing. Um, mm -hmm. and I think you can easily slip down that slope, but just, you know, sit in front of your computer all day and, you know, talking to everyone uh, virtually. I think uh, getting out and meeting people is still, it still matters. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and maybe I'm more partial to that because I manage other people's money. Like no one, no one ever give me their money if they didn't meet me, it just wouldn't happen. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the ultimate trust. So, um, that, um, uh, uh, that's just stuff I like to do. Just like to talk to more people and stuff. So, okay, uh, cool. Well, yeah, that's awesome. You, you gave us a lot of really good advice, and I, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for coming out. Yeah, I appreciate it, Hugh. Uh, please send us more of your Hawaii weather this way. Please. <laughs> okay. We're getting into 
get into November here in New York, it's going to start getting very depressing very fast. So. Oh, man. Yeah, it's pretty tough. Brutal. Yeah. All right. All right. Thanks, Mike. You got it here. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Trading Lifestyle Podcast. To listen to all of the other episodes and get free access to Forex trading tools, tutorials, and resources, visit tradingheroes.com.